That's right, ZBrush 2019 is here and set for release on March 6th, 2019, of course, at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Now, I was actually fortunate enough to be asked to join the beta testing group, so I've had hands-on experience with all of these new features. So let's talk about what you can expect from ZBrush 2019. First up, it's still a free update for people that already own ZBrush. Go ahead, breathe a sigh of relief. They're also introducing a subscription service that gives you the opportunity to pay per month, half a year, or you can still buy the software outright. So an awesome opportunity for those that prefer a pay-as-you-go method. And I think this is awesome as it's something that I get asked about pretty frequently. The first big feature they announced is an update to the BPR filter system that they are calling NPR, which stands for non-photorealistic rendering. At first glance, this feature looks really gimmicky, but after I had the opportunity to get in and play with it and also see the crazy things that everybody else was doing, I think these filters are going to have some really cool uses. I could totally see them being used for rendering images for something like a children's book or even a variety of different styles for prints that you could hang on your wall. I think there's a lot of opportunity here for experimentation and I'm excited to see what all of you do with these tools. One of the most anticipated features in the history of ZBrush, folders are finally here. And there's not really too much to say here. I mean, they offer you the ability to organize your subtools a lot more efficiently. They also provide some bonus features that allow you to move subtools or directly Boolean shapes within a folder, which is much improved over the old method. Yes, you can drag and drop different subtools around, which is super nice, but unfortunately you can't nest folders within other folders. So maybe we can add that to the list of new features we want for ZBrush 2020. Next up, we have actual cameras with real perspective and real focal lengths. This is a really big deal and something I know a lot of you are excited about. You can create and save multiple camera views as well as lock a camera in a specific place so that you don't accidentally bump it. Not only that, but they even gave us some undos for our cameras. So if you move something that you didn't mean to, you can now fix that with a quick click of a button. Something I never expected, they made even more improvements to Z Remesher, calling it Z Remesher 3.0. It's faster, more accurate, has some new features like edge detection, which is super nice. It's incredible how good the topology you can get out of this automatic tool is. No, it's still not going to be animation quality topology. That's going to require a human touch for at least a little bit longer. But damn, ZRemesher 3.0 is a very welcome improvement. Oh, and if for some reason you don't like it, they still have the legacy ZRemesher in there as well. A few other additions are the intersection masker that will create a mask where two meshes are intersecting. A very nice little tool that I'm going to use quite frequently. The Z color plugin that gives us the ability to create color swatches and have more control over our colors in general. This is something that I've wanted for a while because the current tools for working with colors aren't that robust. This is definitely a very welcome update. Snapshot 3D is a new modeling tool that essentially allows you to extrude and create geometry from a mask. This tool is being appended to the Spotlight tool, which I use all the time, and there are a host of new additions to that as well. You can now directly paint and create masks. You can combine and Boolean subtract masks from one another. There's a lot of room here for creating some complex shapes very quickly, but for me, it's not really a tool that I see myself using too often. I greatly prefer using Z Modeler to create really simple and clean geometry in combination with live Boolean. But what I will say is that you'll be able to create much more complex shapes quicker using the Snapshot 3D toolset. Unfortunately, the UV tool that we saw at ZBrush Summit last year, Peel UV, was not announced but was simply delayed, so I eagerly await the chance to get to play with that. There's not really a ton of new features being released in this update, but what is coming is extremely deep. I'm really excited to see people get their hands on the new NPR filters. There's a lot of cool stuff there. The folders, finally ZBrush, right? We've been waiting so long for those. ZRemesher 3.0, wasn't expecting, but holy crap, is it amazing what it can do. Let me know down in the comments what you are most excited to play around with. For me, hands down, give me those folders. I'm ready to be organized, or at least a little bit. Again, I'm Folygon. You guys have a great rest of your day and look forward to more ZBrush content right here on my channel.